Hey guys, it's Matt here, and in this video, I'll be showing you how to install macOS on an MDM locked Mac, and how to get around the lock too. First of all, let's go over what an MDM locked Mac is. MDM stands for Mobile Device Management, and it's something that companies can use to prevent other people from either stealing the computers or misconfiguring them. So it will block out access to different system preferences, or if someone steals it, it will not let them configure it the way that they want to, because they'll connect to Apple's servers, download the profile that it needs, and then it'll go on its merry way. Obviously, that's a good thing to prevent people from stealing computers. I'm not suggesting that you go do this and then do this method to bypass it. I'm saying, that sometimes some companies, like the one that is registered to this computer, they don't remove the lock when they release the computers. This Mac was released and they forgot to remove the lock. And now I looked it up and the company that this specifically ties to doesn't exist anymore. So there's no way for me to get in contact with the company to unlock the Mac. Unfortunately, this does reduce the resale value of this computer because you can't just set it up by installing Mac OS, setting it up the way you normally would, and then bam. That's just how that is. This is a 2014. This is my old MacBook Air. I'll be giving this to my sister because I told her about the lock. I told her I could get around it and she's okay with the lower resale value of the machine. She just wants something newer than her 2012. Now, first off, don't connect this machine to the internet until all of the steps are done. Now, theoretically, after you get past the setup, you can connect it to the internet and there shouldn't be any ill effects there. But I would still suggest that you don't, just to make life easier. Now, first off, you will not be able to use internet recovery, period. You, you can't. If you want to use inter internet recovery, you cannot. So you need to use a USB drive with Mac OS installed. This is a 2014 MacBook Air, so the latest OS that this can run is 11.6.8 as recording this video. There's still another year of security updates that these things will get, so just keep that in mind. And another thing to keep in mind when it comes to software updates is that your software update panel will not work. At least when I did it, it didn't work. You will be able to get app updates. So like Safari will be able to update and you'll be able to get like printer driver updates if you get those through software update. But other than that, you will not be able to get updates through there. You can still install updates if you grab the app files from Apple's website, download them, and then it run the installer, which will then upgrade your machine to a newer version of Mac OS. That works perfectly fine, and that's how I had to update this thing when I first found out about the issue, which is when Big Sur was in beta. So I wasn't actually able to update out of the beta until I installed the app, which worked just fine, but it was kind of a nightmare to do. So keep that in mind, this is an unsupported machine now. It runs Big Sur, which gets security updates still, so updates aren't a problem on this system, First off, before you do anything, you're going to want to turn on the computer and reset the PRAM. The reason why I say to do this is because you want it to forget any Wi-Fi networks that it has remembered. Because you could even tell it in the setup to disconnect from the Wi-Fi. Once you actually get into the setup where you type in your language, Apple ID, all that stuff, it's going to prompt you saying, oh, this is MDM locked, we need to set it up this way, and you need to reinstall macOS if that happens, so keep that in mind. So I'm going to plug in this flash drive here. It should reset the PRAM. You should hear three chimes. That's all three. Now hold the option key to get into your boot picker. Now you'll see the options here. If you had configured your flash drive correctly, it'll show up in here. If you didn't configure it correctly, go to Apple's website. They have a whole web page on how to create bootable installers for old Mac OS. Now, since I have a properly configured flash drive and I'm not gonna be showing a tutorial on how to make those, I have shown that in the past. We're gonna go right ahead and hit install Mac OS Big Sur. The point of what we're doing right now is to prevent the computer from connecting to the MDM servers that Apple uses to go ahead and lock the computer down. So don't connect this thing to the internet at all. And you're gonna to wanna to check and make sure that this shows nothing's connected. It will try to auto connect to something if you have not done this properly. So make sure that you do that properly. And 
if you can get inside the computer, this is overkill, but if you can actually get inside the computer and the Wi-Fi card is removable, take it out because that'll prevent the system from ever obviously connecting to the internet until you're ready for it to. That might be easier depending on your situation. This computer you can actually take the Wi-Fi card out of, but I'm not going to open it up. That's overkill. I have done the PRAM method and obviously you can see it worked because it did not auto connect to any Wi-Fi networks. Do not connect to a Wi-Fi network. Do not. <laughs> Don't do it. This is the reason why you can't use internet recovery, because you cannot be connected to the internet at all while doing this. So I'm going to open up Disk Utility and format the disk and just get this thing ready to install Big Sur. So I need to go ahead and hit View, Show All Devices, and Erase This Drive. We're going to name this Macintosh HD. Oopsies. So yeah, this at this point, it's just gonna be like a regular Mac OS install. Now I would go ahead and prove that this is an MDM locked Mac, but I don't want to waste a few hours of time proving that because I need to install Mac OS, have it lock me out, and then I need to reinstall it again, which I'm not doing. So erase process is complete, click done to continue, and then go ahead and install Mac OS Big Sur. This should work as intended. Now, obviously, if you're running Monterey or something, you're going to use a different operating system. Like that, like I said, this Mac doesn't support anything higher than Big Sur. And my sister doesn't want me to patch Monterey on here for obvious reasons. So, yeah, we're just going to stick with Big Sur on this Mac just because that's the latest that it supports. And I agree to the terms. And now, at this point, this is just going to be like a standard Mac OS install. Your computer's not connected to the power, so that's fine. It's got battery. And there we go. I'll keep an eye on the battery, though. I'm using a charger somewhere else, so I do have to be very mindful of that. At this point, it'll just run through the install, and then once it finishes, I'll be back. So we are at the setup screen that I was talking about earlier, and like I said, you do not want to connect this thing to the internet. So if it's going to prompt you for it, which it will, we're just going to not now on accessibility. We're going to hit other network options and make sure to click my computer does not connect to the internet. Uh, it's gonna say some services require an internet connection, just hit continue. Well, okay, I just skipped a step by accident, but it was just the data and privacy screen. Not now. Uh, terms and conditions, I agree to the terms. I will put the name of the person who will be doing this, so let me do that real quick. Choose your look, I'm just gonna leave it default. And after this screen, I think it's gonna throw me right at the desktop. And it does. So now that you're actually past the part where it can fully lock you out, because at this point, it can't lock you out anymore. Even if you connect this thing to the internet, it's not gonna lock you out. It's just gonna pop a notification saying, this company owns this Mac and you need to set it up with them. You can dismiss it. <laughs> now, there is a way to get rid of that and you're gonna want to do that. Now, you're gonna wanna go to your root of your drive and I'm gonna have to blur out the terminal because it's got someone else's name in there because I'm, I'm setting it up for them. Yeah, you're gonna wanna type in CD system, CD library, and then type in CD period period slash period, period, slash, etc. You're gonna wanna type in sudo nano hosts. It's gonna ask you for your password and it's gonna take you here. Now what you're gonna wanna do is add a few lines into the prompt. So you're gonna need to type these four lines exactly the way that you see them on screen right now. I'm not gonna leave them up super long, so pause the video if you need to, to type them all down. Now I have gone ahead and written everything that I needed to in that file. Thanks for interrupting me. At this point now, you can go ahead and connect your Mac to the internet. It's not gonna lock you out if you did it wrong, so don't worry about that. Now, at this point, you should be free to connect to the internet. Now, what you need to type is this command on screen here, and what you're gonna want to see are two lines that say no. If they both say no, you did this correctly. And you are free to now use your Mac the way you want to. It is now yours. So that's it. Hopefully this video helps out people who have these MDM locked Macs. At least it'll save that machine from becoming e-waste so you can actually use the thing again. Right now my sister is actually happily using this Mac. She loves it and I'm very happy that I was able to get a system that was usable for her. She doesn't need that much, she just needs it for school, so Mac OS Big Sur is more than fine. It's a shame when companies do this kind of thing. Locking the system out actually makes sense, but forgetting to remove the lock when they release the computer that's when it becomes a problem. Anyways, that's it for this video. If you liked it, then hit the like button, get subscribed if you like the content that you see on this channel. Hopefully I'll be able to upload a little more in the future. I'm still in college. I'm actually in one of the hardest semesters I've actually been in. So hopefully I can get to uploading more videos once I actually have more time. So sorry about that, but it's kind of just how it is. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all later. Bye.